Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm Jamal Arif and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. Today we are going to talk about Container Engine for Kubernetes. So just to do a, a quick uh, safe harbor statement, I'll just uh, give you a minute to just read through the statement itself. So the objectives of this course uh, is to go over our container engine for Kubernetes. Uh, we'll talk about how you can launch a Kubernetes cluster on OCI and also what are the prerequisites of launching a cluster. When you launch the cluster, how you can access that cluster using Kube's kubectl uh, and uh, also the Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, some of like for a prerequisites perspective uh, we just you just need to have a basic understanding of uh, the docker and the docker container runtime uh, and kubernetes uh, so as we go into details on uh, kubernetes components uh, you just need to have a basic understanding of those components all right so moving forward what are some of the ways that you can uh, launch kubernetes cluster on oci so the first step is that it's it's kind of a DIY model where uh, just like any other cloud provider uh, from a core IS perspective uh, you have the core components of uh, the infrastructure components of uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and you can utilize those infrastructure components to set up your own Kubernetes cluster. Uh, basically just using the compute, the networking and the storage services from OCI uh, and then installing your own container runtime which can be docker which can be any, any other container runtime uh, or and then on top of it either launch installing your own orchestration system as well so it can be again docker swarm or it can be kubernetes it can be mesos a bunch of different options are available which ha and all of them are kind of open sourced options that are available to you but we call this method as a DIY method because it's you are uh, just we are just providing you the core infrastructure components uh, from Oracle's uh, OCI perspective. Uh, but from the actual from like running all the container management on top of it is all customer based. So it's all on your end. That's why it's called a DIY model. The second uh, kind of approach can be where instead of uh, creating or installing all of the components uh, yourself. Uh, there is a quick start available on Terraform, uh, with Terraform. Uh, it's uh, currently available on GitHub. It's managed by, uh, by, the, by the Oracle team, uh, but, and, it, and they regularly manage it when your versions are there as well. Uh, but it's a quick start experience. What it does is that it gives you uh, quickly, uh, an, uh, like it quickly creates a Kubernetes cluster on top of OCI uh, and I, in the next slide I'll just talk about that what it actually creates uh, as well but there is a quick start experience that is available as well from a uh, from a managed service perspective this is also partly DIY do it yourself because we give you a terraform to set up the kubernetes cluster uh, but at the end you are still managing the cluster yourself the last is what we can call as a container as a service. So uh, this is where our managed Kubernetes service comes into play. We call it uh, or OCI Container Engine for Kubernetes. It's a managed service which allows you to create a Kubernetes cluster within a few minutes. Uh, and from there onwards, the master components are managed by uh, the service itself. Uh, and you are only responsible for your own worker or compute nodes, basically your data plane. And this session uh, primarily and this course primarily will target the last part, which is the uh, which is our managed service, which is the container engine for Kubernetes. So uh, we briefly touched upon the do it yourself uh, uh, method. So the Terraform Kubernetes installer for OCI. So in the Kubernetes installer, uh, it's based on Terraform and it is developed by, uh, by the OCI team uh, and, uh, and it's available on GitHub. The link is available as well. What it does is that it creates a highly available Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so what that means is that as you can see in the figure, uh, it creates multiple master nodes. 
uh, in different availability domains so you can uh, choose how many master nodes that you want to configure uh, and also in which availability domains using the terraform script that it is provided it also lets you create uh, worker nodes across uh, different availability domains as well those worker nodes are again can be uh, can be managed in a way that you can choose what kind of worker node shape that you want a compute node shape that you want from the available compute shapes on OCI uh, you can also launch uh, any bare metal node using that uh, com using this uh, Terraform script as well because uh, you, all you need to do is that you just need to provide the shape in the Terraform uh, variable file the TF variable file and from there onwards it actually creates that cluster for you it also creates uh, all the prerequisites or the infrastructure components. So it creates a virtual cloud network, the subnets, the load balancers, everything is also created with it. And just like we talked earlier, you can specify the number and the shapes of your cluster. It also uh, lets you scale your cluster. So since it's based on Terraform, uh, within the Terraform uh, TF variable file, if you want to scale up the cluster, you can define uh, the total number of the nodes and it would help you scale the cluster as you need. However, in the previous uh, section where we discussed the DIY model, uh, there are a number of different challenges uh, associated while you are managing the Kubernetes cluster yourself. Uh, and we have talked to a number of different customers and uh, some of the challenges that I've enlisted over here are some of common challenges that the customers face when you are managing the Kubernetes cluster yourself. Uh, things like how do I how do you uh, find a path where you can upgrade your uh, Kubernetes cluster to the latest uh, CNCF uh, version of Kubernetes? Uh, so every now and then uh, the the community comes out with newer edition of Kubernetes uh, and upgrading to the latest edition for a number of newer features is is something very a common uh, issue. Uh, how do you integrate with the number of different uh, CICD uh, in, uh, options available uh, and open source options available. Uh, what do you do about container networking and storage? Uh, so uh, how do you build out that overlay network for Kubernetes to run? Uh, how do you make sure that there is persistent storage available uh, for your Kubernetes workloads? So a number of these things are uh, there uh, and a number of challenges are there when you are trying to uh, manage your Kubernetes cluster yourself. So that's where uh, a managed Kubernetes service comes in. So what is uh, the container engine for Kubernetes? Well, it's a managed Kubernetes container service to deploy and run your own container-based applications. Uh, it provides you to a tooling to uh, create a standard Kubernetes cluster, uh, scale it, manage it, and control your access to the Kubernetes cluster as well. What are the problems that it's solving? Well, uh, as we were talking on the last slide, maintaining a Kubernetes environment is really complex. You have, it's costly, it's time consuming, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of complexity associated with a number of different components uh, on the Kubernetes master nodes, or worker nodes, bunch of stuff. It's also hard to integrate Kubernetes with uh, additional life cycle, uh, like container life cycle management pro uh, products so you can see registry being one uh, what about the CICD frameworks what about networking uh, what about security po uh, storage and in addition to this how do you manage and control the access to your cl cluster how do you figure out which team uh, how do you figure out that granular access control to your Kubernetes cluster well Kubernetes container engine for Kubernetes is basically solving all those problems for you uh, it's built on uh, the OCI underlying infrastructure so it it provides you to quickly spin up a cluster and also allows you to utilize the uh, the, the the high perf predictable performance and the features like security I am in control of the Orca cloud infrastructure so if you look at uh, the kubernetes uh, engine on OCI uh, what is maintained by the customer and what is maintained by Oracle uh, on the left hand side you see the uh, OCI registry service which is uh, tightly integrated with the Kubernetes engine itself uh, and the master components of container engine. So you have the cluster management of your overall master's nodes, 
uh, you have multiple etcd nodes which are living across availability domains or fault domains uh, and you have the container engine dashboard all are maintained by oracle itself by the service itself what a customer is doing is only managing the worker nodes or the com or the or the data plane or the compute cluster that they are creating which can be virtual machine based or a bare metal based similarly from a pricing structure uh, all the services that oracle is providing are free from a managed service perspective and customer is only paying for the resources they are using so any of the virtual machines or bare metal compute nodes that they're running as their worker nodes they'll be paying for those and any of the storage they are using for uh, persistence or any additional services like load balancer uh, they will be only paying for underlying infrastructure resources in that case so just to summarize uh, what are some of the key features of our container engine so number one it's container native so you have you get the standard docker and uh, the docker runtime and the standard vanilla kubernetes the registry is completely integrated and it is fully docker v2 com uh, compliant you also have full integration to cloud uh, networking and storage uh, so for instance you can use load balancer uh, for your services you can also use the block volume service and the fss for persistent storage uh, in addition it is developer friendly so you get a uh, complete full rest api which basically allows you to automate the workflow of creating a cluster scaling the clusters uh, you have uh, built-in add-ons like dashboard dns and help uh, and it's also based on open standards. So it's a Docker, standard Docker container runtime. It's a standard Kubernetes. Uh, and you can get direct, uh, SSH access to your worker nodes as well. And from an enterprise perspective, it's like you can run your uh, worker nodes as bare metal uh, nodes as well. And you can run them across different fault domains or availability domains. So giving you a high available uh, application architecture. Uh, and you and it, and everything is integrated with the identity and access management system so you can really go uh, granular on the im controls and policies and allow only teams which have the ax which require the access and the kind of and the scope of access that they require uh, so that you get that uh, security uh, uh, structure set up for your kubernetes cluster in the next video uh, we'll talk more on how do you create a kubernetes cluster on oci uh, thank you for joining.